Hello everyone, let us discuss about control drug delivery system. So first of all, what is an ideal dosage regimen? An ideal dosage regimen in the drug therapy of any disease is the one which immediately attains desired therapeutic concentration of the drug in plasma or at the site of action and it maintains constant for the entire duration of treatment. It should immediately attain desired therapeutic concentration at the site of action and it should maintain constant for the entire duration of treatment. And the term drug delivery covers a broad range of techniques used for therapeutic agents used to get therapeutic agents into human body. And an ideal drug delivery system should deliver the drug at a rate dictated by the needs of the body over a specified period of treatment. Ideally, there are two types of ideal drug delivery systems, especially in case of controlled drug, drug delivery systems. They are spatial drug delivery system, spatial drug delivery system and the temporal drug delivery system. So what is spatial drug delivery system? Spatial. It relates targeting as the name indicates it is related to space. It relates to targeting a drug to a specified organ or tissue. Example is distribution controlled drug delivery system. So this is beneficial in two situations. Whenever the natural distribution causes drug molecules to encounter tissues and cause major side effects that prohibit further treatment. So distribution control drug delivery system is specifically important in case of chemotherapy, especially when bone marrow cell death prevents the patient from undergoing a complete treatment. And second case is whenever the natural distribution of a drug does not allow drug molecules to reach their molecular site of action. Even in such case also distribution controlled drug delivery system is beneficial. For example, if a drug molecule acts on the receptor of a brain and that active molecule, if it cannot cross blood brain barrier, that is an issue. In such cases, distribution control drug delivery system is employed. And this is an example of spatial drug delivery system. The next type is temporal drug delivery system. As the name indicates, it relates to controlling the rate or specificity of a time. Temporal drug delivery system refers to controlling the rate or specific time of drug delivery to target tissues. And temporal drug delivery system is beneficial for drugs which are rapidly metabolized and have shorter half-lives. Now coming to the definition of controlled drug delivery system, CRDDS, Control Release Drug Delivery System or Controlled drug delivery system is also fine. So CRDDS can improve therapeutic efficacy and safety of a drug by, by precise temporal and spatial placement in the body, thereby reducing both the size and the frequency or the number of doses required. Ideal characteristic or the necessity of control drug delivery system is to improve the therapeutic efficacy and safety of the drug by precise temporal and spatial placement in the body thereby reducing the size of the drug that is size of the dose and also the number of doses that are administered. Coming to the advantages of control drug delivery systems. The first one is it improves patient compliance due to less frequency of drug administration and second one is reduction in the fluctuations in steady state concentration and because of the reduction in fluctuations in the steady state concentration better control of disease condition is seen and reduced intensity of local or systemic side effects is seen. And the third point is increased safety margin of high potency drugs due to better control of plasma level. And the next one is maximum utilization of drug enabling the reduction 
in total amount of dose administered and finally reduction in the health care costs by improved therapy due to shorter treatment time lower frequency of dosing and reduction in the personal time to dispense administer and monitor the patients these are the factors which contribute to reduction in the health care costs now coming to the disadvantages of controlled release drug delivery systems the first point is decreased systemic availability in comparison to immediate release conventional dosage forms and this may be due to incomplete release or due to increased first pass metabolism or due to increased instability or insufficient residence time for complete release or due to site specific absorption or due to ph dependent solubility all these factors may decrease the systemic availability of controlled release drug delivery system in comparison to immediate conventional dosage form the second disadvantage is poor in vitro in vivo correlation ivivc cannot be correlated generally in case of controlled release drug delivery systems the third one is possibility of dose dumping that is due to food physiological or formulation variables or chewing or grinding of the oral formulations by the patients and due to dose dumping increased risk of toxicity is seen in case of controlled release drug delivery systems the next disadvantage is retrieval of drug is difficult in case of toxicity poisoning or hypersensitivity reactions and the next one is reduced potential for dosage adjustment of drugs normally administered in varying strength and finally higher cost of formulation is also a disadvantage of controlled release drug delivery system now coming to the factors in the design of controlled release drug delivery systems there are broadly three factors which govern the design of controlled release drug delivery system they are biopharmaceutical characteristics of the drug biopharmaceutical characteristics of the drug in the design of crdds and the next factor is pharmacokinetic characteristics of the drug and the next one is pharmacodynamic characteristics of the drug biopharmaceutical characteristics pharmacokinetic characteristics and pharmacodynamic characteristics these are the three broad factors which govern the release the design of control release drug delivery system now let us discuss in detail about each of these factors now coming to the biopharmaceutical characteristics of drug in the design of crdds the biopharmaceutical characteristics which govern the design of crdds are molecular weight of the drug aqua solubility of the drug apparent partition coefficient or lipophilicity of the drug and drugs pka and ionization at the physiological ph five factors now first of all coming to molecular weight of the drug lower the molecular weight faster and more complete the absorption and for the drugs that are absorbed by pore transport the molecular size threshold is 150 daltons for spherical compounds and 400 daltons for linear compounds however more than 95% of the drugs are absorbed by passive diffusion and diffusivity what is diffusivity it is defined as an ability of a drug to diffuse through the membranes and it is inversely related to the molecular size hence low molecular weight ideally favors passive diffusion and the upper limit of drug molecule size for passive diffusion is 600 daltons and the drugs with large molecular size are poor candidates for oral control release system examples are peptides and proteins the next one is aqua solubility of the drug a drug with good aqua solubility especially if ph independent 
serves as a good candidate for controlled release dosage forms. An example is pentoxyphilin. And usually the lower limit for the solubility of a drug to be formulated as CRDDS is 0.1 mg per ml. The next one is apparent partition coefficient or lipophilicity of the drug. Greater the apparent partition coefficient of the drug, greater its lipophilicity and greater its rate and extent of absorption. And usually for control release drug delivery systems, the partition coefficient KOW must be 1 to 2. And the next one is drugs PKA and ionization at the physiological pH. The PKA range for acidic drugs whose ionization is pH sensitive is 3 to 7.5 and that of basic drugs is 7 to 11. And the drugs that ex existing as largely in ionized forms are poor candidates for controlled drug delivery system. This is an important point. The drugs existing largely in ionized form are poor candidates for drug controlled release delivery system. Example is hexamethonium. And ionization at the pH, uh, physiological pH, that is drugs that are completely present in ionized forms are poor candidates for controlled delivery. These are the various biopharma, biopharmaceutic characteristics of the drug in the design of CRDDS. Now coming to pharmacokinetic characteristics of the drug. The pharmacokinetic characteristics are, as we all know, pharmacokinetics is nothing but study of absorption, distribution, elimination and metabolism. First of all, coming to absorption rate. For a drug to be administered as controlled release formulation, its absorption must be sufficient since the desired rate limiting step is rate of drug release. So the drug should have sufficient absorption rate. And the next one is elimination half-life. An ideal control release drug delivery system is the one which in for which rate of drug absorption that is for extended period of time is equal to rate of elimination and smaller T half larger the amount of the drug to be incorporated into controlled release dosage forms. If the elimination half-life of the drug is small, then large amount of the drug should be incorporated in controlled release dosage form. And the drugs with half-life in the range of 2 to 4 hours make good candidates for such system. Example is propranolol. The next one is rate of elimination a drug which is extensively metabolized is suitable for control release system as long as the rate of metabolism is not too rapid this is an important point though the drug is extensively metabolized if the rate of metabolism is not rapid then we can formulate a control release dosage form and the extent of metabolism should be identical and predictable when the drug is administered by different routes. And finally, dosage for index DI. It is defined as the ratio of CSS max to CSS minimum. CSS max is nothing but maximum steady state concentration and CSS minimum is minimum steady state concentration and that ratio is dosage for index and since the goal of the control release formulation is to improve the therapy by reducing the dos dosage form index while maintaining the plasma levels within the therapeutic window ideal value ideally the dosage form index value should be close to one as possible so these are the various pharmacokinetic characteristics of the drug in the design of controlled release drug delivery system. 
Now coming to pharmacodynamic characteristics of the drug in the design of CRDDS. The various pharmacodynamic characteristics are drug dose, therapeutic range, therapeutic index and plasma concentration response relationship. Plasma concentration and pharmacodynamic response relationship. The first one is dose. Dose strength of 1 gram is considered maximum for CRDDS. And the next one is therapeutic range. The, what is therapeutic range? The concentration between minimum effective concentration and the maximum safe concentration is the therapeutic range of a drug. And the candidate, uh, candidate drug for control release drug delivery system should have therapeutic range wide enough such that variations in the release rate do not result in concentration beyond this level. So the therapeutic range must be wide in order to be formulated as controlled release drug delivery system. The next one is therapeutic index. So therapeutic index is nothing but even similar to that of therapeutic range, the therapeutic index should also be wide for a drug to be formulated as controlled release drug delivery system. The ratio of maximum safe concentration to minimum effective concentration is a therapeutic index and that should also be wide. And the next one is, next and final one is plasma concentration response relationship. And the drugs such as reserpine whose pharmacological activity is independent of its concentration are poor candidates for drug uh, control release systems. So, the plasma concentration and the pharmacodynamic response should be related. In such cases only, we can formulate a controlled release drug delivery system. And for drugs such as reserpine, whose pharmacological activity is independent of its concentration, they are considered as poor candidates for controlled release drug delivery system. Now, let us briefly discuss the overall summary. So we have discussed about biopharmaceutical properties, pharmacokinetic properties and pharmacodynamic properties. These are the properties of the drug and these are the desired features. So first one is molecular weight. As we have discussed, it should be less than 600 Daltons. And the next one is aqua solubility. It should be more than 0.1 mg per ml. The next is partition coefficient. It should be 1 to 2. And next is dissociation constant or pKa. And for acidic drugs, the pKa must be less than 2.5. It should be greater than 2.5. And for basic drugs, the pKa must be less than 11. Ionization at physiological pH and not more than 95% is the criteria. Not more than 95% of the drug. The next one is stability in GIT. The drug candidate should be stable at both gastric and intestinal pH. The next one is absorption mechanism. Majorly, it must be passive absorption or passive diffusion, but it should not be through a window. The next factor is pharmacokinetic properties. Absorption rate constant must be high. The elimination half-life must be 2 to 6 hours. And the metabolism rate, though the drug is extensively metabolized, the metabolism rate should not be too high or rapid. The dosage form index should be ideally equal to 1. The next one is pharmacodynamic properties. The dose is maximum dose is 1 gram in controlled release form. Therapeutic range must be wide and therapeutic index must be wide and pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic relationship must be good. These are the various desired features for the drugs that must be formulated or that they are suitable to be designed as controlled release drug delivery systems. Thank you.